Assalamualaikum Shafat. Hasib and Zafi. Thank you so much for having me at Cave Talk. Such a pleasure. No, the pleasure is all ours. Kab se hum ye baat kare the that we should uh, get together and have a talk. So we said, why don't we involve other people there as well? Because the sharing of information hoti hai. Usme har koi ek dusre se seek leta hai. So no, thank you for taking time. Yeah, yeah, and it's good to see you. You're looking good, and the paintings behind you are looking good. I like this uh, very godfatherish office that you have. And with your George Clooney uh, look, like you know, so Shafat, mashallah, yeah. Come on, you know, you guys are always welcome. You know that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a pleasure, man. And thank you. But before we go further, we say that we can start with the, uh, the the blessings in your life and what you're grateful for. So we're grateful for the announcements that you started for the Cave Talks on your own initiative. We were making it, and we, our, our designs were quite pathetic. And you said that, yeah. You know, it, it really tortures me to see a bad design. So, can I please do this free of cost for you guys? Because I really like you guys and the, the kind of work that you're doing in your CSR and so on and so forth. So, thank you for 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 that. Absolutely, and like you know, we, yeah. It's surprising, Shafat, that we never we never met in Dubai. Sorry to interrupt you. हम लोग अकेले थे दुबई में for a while, लेकिन कभी मुलाकात नहीं हुई हमारी. I'm sure we bumped into each other. Uh, Kahi malls may or you know one of those places. So uh, yeah, it's. I'm sure I can guarantee I've I've asked for a lighter from Azim. That's some coffee shop. Say it. So uh, usually uh, uh, cave topic, you can say informal, candid, pleasant, funny. Oh, uh, what Rather than me introducing yourself, why don't you introduce? Um, what you do etc to us and for all the people who are joining us now i mean i know that you are a you're a marketing guru you're an advertising uh, like you know brain brain and you sort of like are, are, are very creative in your problem solving skills to so, maine ek baat there is a note kiya jo like you know that i've been dealing with you 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 you, you give him a problem hmm. and he comes up with a with the most out of the box absurd uh, solution which is so <laughs> Like you know, unthinkable by an average mind, but only a growth mind orient, mindset oriented person like yourself, like you know, comes up with it. So like you know, yeah, re re really happy to have you in our network of friends, and I'm sure Kirika will be connecting you with a lot of people, and like you know, we'll be getting connected through you also because you are a master closer as I see you, right? Oh, yeah. well, thank you very much for for so many kind words. You know, I remember us meeting up at a at a dinner and. We gelled in so well, uh, so many good memories, and and the kind of work that Intech is doing, and the kind of legacy that the two of you hold in the training and coaching sector, uh, and you know all your publications which are coming up. I think you guys are doing a great job. Uh, you know, ours is different. We we try to play with the consumer's mindset. We don't really develop humans, or we don't develop nations. I think the responsibility and the role that you two are playing is obviously way more. Amazing, and you know, it's, it's it's a great service to humanity. Uh, and okay, coming back to the introduction, uh, uh, I'm Shafat Hashmi. I'm the CEO and founder of Brandbeat Advertising and Communications. Uh, we are headquartered out of Dubai, as you know, and we have eight offices. Uh, last week, we have opened up with our Australia office as well. Um, still on a growth trajectory, Alhamdulillah. Served over so seven exactly, plus. Sorry, where exactly in Australia? So we are in Melbourne, and from there on, we're going to move down to Sydney, and you know maybe expand a little bit. Uh, currently, we're in Saudi, we're in Bahrain. You know, we are very much in the Middle East, and also in Lahore. Uh, one and a half year ago, we started out with Lahore office, posted 300% plus growth, did a good job, you know. And uh, furthermore, I'm also the CEO for Stallion Gates Asset Management, which is based out of Abu Dhabi, and uh, well, that. The firm somehow is bleeding because of the devaluation in assets, um, particularly in the real estate and hospitality sector for the last three months. Uh, but yes, we have come up with new asset classes uh, with uh, uncorrelated, uh, you know, assets, uh, private equity placement, venture capital, um, and obviously the startup space. So briefly, this is all I am. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, maybe. After the talk is over, I would love to know more about uh, the situation of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because you are in financials. Uh, one of the youngsters uh, they they ask me questions like this. I said no. 
you can ask me questions on psychology etc but this is a field that i don't know anything about me to me to bitcoin is very much part of as i see it shafat i mean correct me if i'm wrong uh ke bitcoin or uh, and cryptocurrency will be will be very much uh, like you know part or part of about the uh, uh, of the topic that we are discussing today business leadership during pandemic should include some bitcoin knowledge also right <laughs> no, <laughs> crypto came up because it addressed a, it it was addressing a gap and the gap was of transactions which anyways were happening without the regular banking structure so and people wanted to make all kinds of deals so everything in this world is somehow selling because there is a need out there um right. so yes it tapped into the psychographics of a certain segment and because of the rising demand yes it started playing its role a typical demand supply equation is what these guys played with so you reduce the supply the demand is there the price goes up and this is exactly what happened in crypto so yes i think crypto Uh, for now maybe it's going to do better because uh essentially we are not using cash anymore even in a country like pakistan we had easy pesa and then jas cash recently being launched with their app heavily advertising so yes it's going to get all digital and obviously it will have a spillover effect on crypto as well so fingers crossed and if you're invested in crypto it's all right just hold on to it <laughs> <laughs> i'm old school uh, shafat uh, you know cash in hand <laughs> that's what <laughs> i live by at the moment <laughs> so let's jump into the topic uh, today which is about leadership um what what have you observed uh, in these past 3 months uh, more than 3 months rather what are the behaviors of the leaders these days in all industries actually how would you describe a persona of a leader in in the pandemic situation i think zofi bless try to understand the difference between a typical ceo and leader that's very important now every ceo is definitely not a business leader uh, a leader is someone who has empathy who nurtures people who cares about pretty much all their stakeholders and it's not essentially only profit oriented i mean profitability or revenues is a uh, more like a byproduct for a business leader a business leader right. has a bigger vision and he obviously taps into into the future in a very interesting way now if we talk about business leaders yes i consider bill gates and many others as business leaders who stepped down from the board of microsoft you know 7 8 months ago because they could see what's coming and they adapted to the change much earlier than us So yes business leaders uh, like for example we have our hotels in Dubai and uh, we also have certain assets the moment we saw the pandemic coming there were two ways out panic do nothing or have a growth mindset you know find an opportunity amidst the pandemic so a business leader's mindset is always that okay this thing has become irrelevant let's say hospitality and tourism is not going to come up at least for the next one and a half two years it's going to take time you know right so for me to further bleed for the next two years holding on to my assets pay rentals pay everything is better to shut it down now and probably use the same human resources for another business so yes healthcare is booming digital is booming um you know many other businesses are doing well so why not just start something on in those sectors so business leaders is more about having a vision understanding what is going to be the new norm 2 years from now what would be our life uh, style uh, what how the psychographics of our consumer segments would change and what is it that i can tap into so yes we all have a lot of challenges all the way from financial management to human resource management to coming up with the revised sales and marketing strategy i mean for investment we cannot as you know that you're in the same space so If selling a training or a coaching course you always have to go and meet a c level gentleman or the human resources director or the human development guy now it's no more about meetings it's about being online and still trying to give and sell your product so same goes with us in investments i think the whole dynamic set things and if we do not adopt to it and if we are late and if we miss 2020 i think a lot of businesses will be out of business You know, uh, just one second. We uh, like some ideas, so just 
adjusting to different uh, sounds. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, but I do know that there is a concern for certain businesses to be running. It's not easy to shut down. I mean, it's a difficult decision. But, uh, you know, with the factories shutting down with no profitability, then retaining of the employees, there are so many things at play. So how can all this kind of retention still be there and yet bring something out of it? What is a more creative thing to do? So, Zafi, I mean, for us, it was a very simple decision. Let's say when the pandemic hit, we were normal. We had the cash with us for the next six months for majority of my businesses. And today I can pay their gratuity and I can pay them their salaries in full and bid them goodbye, which is good for them compared to bringing them and asking them to continue working for me and then come in a cash debt situation where I'm unable to pay their salaries and also unable to pay their gratuity. You know? So instead of getting into that situation, it's better to take the poison pill today and you know excuse our employees with integrity so it's it's these are harsh decisions that we need to take um at the same time some of our businesses which went out with a growth mindset essentially our advertising business um digital marketing business um over there yes we immediately adopted with the work from home um you know setup um, even for raising investments venture capital startup ecosystem business whatever we were doing for that everything is pretty much in place and we are still on the hiring spree by the way so amidst the pandemic i mean yes we all have opportunities uh which we can you know uh go into uh which we can tap into it's just that we just have to do things differently add more innovation to it and this is what a business leader should do uh it's all about decision making and making timely decisions which is extremely important so a, a lot of clients came to us and they said well it's time for us to market go to market and i was like listen if the sector is completely irrelevant and it's dying out there is no point you know uh marketing it or going ahead with aggressive sales essentially because both the investor sentiment and the customer sec uh, sentiment is not very positive uh, primarily uh, because of uncertainty. So when we cannot, you know, sort of see what's coming up and where it's all going to end up, uh, therefore it becomes very difficult for us or for any business leader to to take decision in a hazy situation. Uh, and I think if if you have a business which you can still sustain, can still uh, you know manage somehow and just sail through for another one and a half two years. You know, then it's great. I think it's about consolidation um, as of today, and that's very much the strategy that we should be all looking at. I think uh, Hasib and Zofi has uh, uh, has a connection problem, and um, I'll see if I can try to keep you guys busy. Let me see if you you are commenting, so maybe I could take up uh, some of your questions. You know. Uh, well, it's not there. Not there. Okay, so we are here. You're are back. You there? You're back. Yeah, we're back. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's all right. No. That's digital Pakistan, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yes, you are just, just like you are just to any uncertain circumstances. That's the best that you can do, and that's the main <laughs> message here out today as well. No, the, the, but but I but, but I want to add something also. It's also partly because I mean for the viewers and and. The, is because we, we are in the mountains. So in Bourbon, uh, the Wi-Fi connection uh, sometimes comes and goes. So when we have Wi-Fi, so we are connected with societies and civilizations such as yourselves, where, wherever you are from. But when we are not connected on Wi-Fi, we somehow have better connectivity up there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um. Next thing, you, as you were mentioning in your introduction, that you have international offices, branch offices, etc. So uh, the main concern of uh, some, I'll use the word leader, whether it's head of organization or uh, team leaders, etc., is the monitoring and accountability of s such branches. Of course, with Zoom and other softwares, etc., the connectivity is more. People are talking about to each other much more 
then they would phone nahi kai dafa you know people don't call and check up but now every day it is mandatory for uh, other other teams to connect but uh, what is a good way how can you monitor you know the hr uh, is now thinking of changing some of the the procedures etc of uh, accountability and monitoring so what do you think about that zafi very good question because this has been a serious challenge for us so uh, i'll start off uh, with one basics and the first and foremost important thing is when you hire you need to look into that how what is the level of integrity in the person that you're hiring because anyone that you're hiring is essentially representing your company i mean your brand name is written on his forehead the moment he joins your firm so integrity is very important honesty and passion for work something and obviously a person who's working he needs to love what he's doing and this is the key this is what we find in our people now if we have built in integrity in people it becomes very easy for us and it reduces our cost for monitoring as well but absolutely you're right now putting up the software what we have done is that we have picked up a lot of screens so we try to reduce the hierarchy we have we have gone for a more flat up uh, you know organizational structure we have imparted more responsibility we have created every single person as a self project manager so everybody has their tasks and projects which they need to look at and they're accountable for themselves i mean they got to do their own performance appraisal and we have just given them the structure so it if the moment i think we we give more responsibility and people are performing during a certain time set it's good i think where we have changed what we have changed is it's no more a 9 to 5 setup you know uh people are sitting at home they can they are now more productive at the same time as well i see them that they're sitting in their zone of comfort they can jump around they can eat they can watch tv for 5 minutes and then get back to work uh it's not that office politics have definitely reduced there no more office politics there's also not a lot of time wastage when it comes to traveling back and forth from the office so on an average an employee certainly saves you know somewhere around 1 and a half to 3 hours daily on commute and at the same time you know fuel and many things so all of that adds up and what we are essentially doing is we are having a share screen model so we know what everybody is doing and we have regular checks after every 3 hours just to see that just to track the performance so this is essentially that we have implemented across the board um uh, with all these offices i believe uh today i'm thinking that it was a mistake to uh you know open so many offices we didn't we didn't we didn't need to essentially have uh so many you know rentals to be paid out people can still work from home people can still do business development from home and you guys have been in dubai and you know there's a lot of coffee shop business in dubai uh, people don't have offices they meet in a coffee shop and they're done with the deal so you know this is how it is i think adil ahmed is asking about uh, status of dubai's expo 2020 well it has moved forward it's definitely not happening this year and uh, i think it's a wise move from the government of dubai uh, because definitely it's not the right time and they could not really attract what they wish to attract uh for the more they're going to have a soft launch of the certain portions of the expo 2020 um just to see because some of those projects are due to deliver but uh, essentially expo and a lot of other things have definitely you know uh moved ahead of their time and everything is going to happen in 2021 um 2022 but yes because of the expo there has been an impact because the news of expo did accelerate and did add positive sentiments into the real estate market and the investor sentiment was positive so yes the real estate at least picked up the investments picked up generally in dubai because of the expo a lot of businesses opened up you know um, as you know construction is related it's just real estate alone is related to 72 plus industries so if your real estate is going up 72 other industries are also going up but uh you know having said that with expo there were a lot many more industries you know which were also going up like tourism logistics supply chain and you name it and you know people in the advertising business exhibition space business advertising and marketing business so yes expo had a huge economic impact but unfortunately i think they need to be patient with it they need to hold on to it until next year so this is exactly this essentially what's really happening um, over there okay i think we we have lost uh zakin and see the game because yes in the cave 
there is no Wi-Fi, so uh, we are having the Cape Talk. But at the same time, let me see if, if there are any more uh, questions which we can. Okay, Adil Saab has written, the reason we in Pakistan are known as extremely resilient people is because we're completely at home with Ruka, born and bred in it as a matter of fact. Um, well, yes, we are, you know, a resilient nation. And, uh, and you know, but at the same time, we, we are also a nation who's usually looking for shortcuts. So I think if we as a nation and as business owners um, open up our minds, uh, increase our exposure, adopt to the best practices which are around. Um, and I, I always say that it's extremely important for us to uh, to you know adopt to the change and be flexible. Uh, if we do not and our businesses, local businesses do not go digital today, we are going to lose big time in the international scenario. Uh, we need to develop and have our own unicorns. We need to come up with original ideas. We need to develop our healthcare sector essentially, and we need to work on research on many things, scientific research, product research. We need to come up with solutions. We need to work on agri, uh, agriculture and technology, which is agri-tech. We can work on fintech. Uh, we need to work on robotics and AI. We need to come up with latest manufacturing, um, you know, um, our government as well, which needs to play a role to provide us at least with the right energy resources and cheaper electricity, for example, no load shedding. Um, but furthermore, we also need more and more free zones in this country so we can essentially attract investment. And we're having more free zones because Pakistan is a great country. You know, we have pretty much all the natural resources out here. And uh, with all those resources, uh, and most importantly, we have 60% of it is youth, which is, uh, which is employable. And if we work on developing their skills and give them more relevant skills, market relevant skills and the skills of the future, uh, yes, we will be a great nation that can export softwares and you know um, technical skills and uh, freelancing work that can essentially bring a lot of FDI into our country, only from even the services sector compared to you know uh, regular exports that that we're looking at. So this is where we are. Um, okay, let me let me ask them. So let's see if you guys can comment on on the Facebook because if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to take. Um, since uh, my friends are not there, maybe uh, Dubai is okay, totally tourism centric. Is it going to be able to bounce back or will it amalgamate with Abu Dhabi? Well, uh, uh, I don't think uh, that other stuff, it is going to amalgamate with Abu Dhabi. You know, Abu Dhabi is Abu Dhabi and Dubai is Dubai. Uh, they're two different states completely. And so goes with Ras al-Khaimah and, and Sharjah and Ajman and Alain. Uh, not sorry, Alain. Alain is part of Abu Dhabi. But as you see, Ras al-Khaimah has their own strategy to bring in their own tourism and develop their own free zones. And so goes with Ajman. Um, I think Dubai and Abu Dhabi is definitely not going to amalgamate. They are, they are a country, absolutely. Uh, but then at the same time, they both have distinct economies of their own. Dubai, yes, is not only tourism-based, by the way. Dubai was tourism-based. It, it Yes, a significant portion is tourism-based. But if you see the trajectory of Dubai, you know, the last 20 years, I mean, they came up with an internet and a media uh, city 20 years ago, they started off developing the Palm Jumeirah 20 years ago. So they are way ahead. Um, considering Pakistan and making comparison, all we have is an Arpa Karim IT tower. Compared to their media city, which has been established 20 years ago, they have a studio city, they have a knowledge city, they have an academic city. So yes, they are trying to attract lots of tourism, but the tourism is for all types. You know, uh, medical tourism, educational tourism, uh, investment tourism, DIFC, as you know, is, is operating at a very big scale. Um, their stock markets are very much stable. So uh, real estate has been a huge sector in Dubai. Hospitality has been huge. So yes, the pandemic has hit almost everyone. 
but it is about how you deal with the situation. So if you look at what Abu Dhabi or Dubai has done, it's brilliant. They have gone with free testing in all those areas which uh, people who cannot afford testing. Um, so they are conducting free tests all over the place. They have confined, they went into a complete lockdown for three, four weeks, and they're trying to contain it in, in a lot of places in Dubai. So yes, still the rate of infections is somehow controlled. Um, they have taken the right decisions. They have got the right SOPs in place, uh, both at the Abu Dhabi airport as well as the Dubai, all three terminals, perhaps four uh, terminals in Dubai. So yes, they have taken those kinds of steps, which will ensure that business somehow goes as usual. But a country like UAE, and especially a city like Dubai, which has the right infrastructure, which has the right uh, leadership, the right government policies, ease of doing business, um, the right visa policies, for example, which have definitely been eased out. I think this country is going to bounce back. Welcome back. You know, I kept talking. Thank you. <laughs> good, good, good. You held the fort. No, no, very good. And I see that, like, you know, uh, a, a, a lot of uh, uh, people are sort of like commenting and let me just sort of like sh share some so some of the comments that like, you know, while we were away, that what you had to say, of course, we'll watch it later. But then again, what people have to say also, like, you know, so so insightful discussion. This is very good. And then uh, uh, Adil uh, was asking, is asking the reason we in Pakistan are known as extremely resilient people is because we are completely at home with we UCA born and bred in the matter of uh, please uh, Adil ki baat kya hai ki hai, so baat clarify kare. So I actually went on the comment section and I have answered almost every single question of Adil in the meantime. Perfect. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the informal discussion that we were having, uh, people are thinking of diversifying and uh, sometimes market gives an opportunity of investments, um, even during these uncertain times in history also. So if you had a million dollars, what kind of a sector would you invest in or what is I'll a general party, I guess. <laughs> I'll party I'll, you know you never know when you're gonna die after 15 days with, with, the, with the virus so I'm gonna probably just you know <laughs> <turn> away <laughs> God forbid I mean God bless everybody some health and may, may God protect all of us but uh, yes given a million dollars I think I will definitely invest into three key sectors um, number okay. one is to invest in a good digital startup. Um, a startup which has an original idea, which is scalable, which is monetizable, and which not only looks after or addresses the need of a niche, but addresses the need of masses. So that's number one. Um, number two, uh, where I'm gonna invest is absolutely 100% eyes closed healthcare. You know, healthcare is the future because as you know, even our air traveling is now dependent on having tests. So the visa policies globally are going to change. And if you have a nice diagnostic center, uh, which offers these things at a cheaper price or maybe some testing kits, um, you know, that definitely is one place to go. And the third space where we are already in is digital marketing. I think the media, the fabric of media has changed. It has become very much online. So yes, I would love to launch something which is more like an online channel or a digital marketing agency. Um, you know, since we are also doing a talk show online, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of talk shows popping up, you know, left, right, and the center. So what really differentiates a good talk show from a bad talk show is, number one, their branding, and number two, their content. And it's not only what we discuss in these 40 minutes, but it is also about how we present that content through infographics, through video. Um, so being very honest, you know, if me, Hasib, Zofi, and all of us, we sit together to watch a one and a half hour Hollywood movie, it has so much animation, so much action, so much drama. And even after one and a half hour, we're kind of tired, you know, we still need a break. We need to munch. With so much dancing going on. With so much dancing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so I, I still wonder how can people still listen to a 45 minutes or a one hour interview, because yes, today it is working, but one year down the lane, these interviews will completely change. 
So the online content, home entertainment is the third big industry, which is going to boom. Um, online trainings and coaching, boom. Everybody needs to train. When people are sitting idle at home, they need to add to their skill set. And this is where this thing comes in and that's your business, which has a great future. True. And uh, I was, we were discussing on another cave talk um, with Javed Iqbal and we were talking about uh, millennials and Gen Z. Now, uh, maybe our generation still, uh, they can hold their focus for interesting talks, etc. But uh, there has to be a very creative change for Gen Z, especially because uh, their concentration time and focus time has become shortened because yeah. of so many distractions, etc. So you're very right that uh, some kind of a creative entertainment, which is not long, which keeps people relaxed. Um, I'm, I'm down for it. Oh, if you start something like that, please keep me in mind. <laughs> no, I understand. We're gonna we're gonna start with a pipe talk compared to a cave talk. So <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Lenny, my, my my two cents on the whole thing is, you know, managing businesses after a pandemic is not going to be a problem for people who've been dealing with turbulences all their lives and so on and so forth. They've seen so many ups and downs. You've seen so many ups and downs. This is this is reflected in your gray hair, that wolfy look that you have, Shafat. Yeah. So, of course, but, buddy, you, know, you remember 2008 in Dubai, it was a havoc. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely right. And then people told us like, you know, Blackberry hired us at that time. I mean, like, you know, uh, just just uh, you, 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 you talked about 2008 and my mind goes back to yeah. that memory lane when uh, Babur Khan of like, you know, ex U phone CEO, he was the, the CEO of Blackberry in, in the Middle East. And then like, you know, and they became the the largest distributors of uh, BlackBerry globally. And then, so uh, he hired us, he said like, you know, well, the, uh, the, there is a recession in the market, in the economy. And I won't, I don't want, his single most objective was, Kiri, I don't want that recession to be hitting the minds of the people. Mm. Mm. And so our, all our training programs revolve around those things, Kiri, how to deal, it's, it's all in the mind. Yes, there are opportunities, like, you know, even in pandemics, like people, uh, are, are making millions. A Lebanese friend of mine, Sharbel Khalil, is a very smart entrepreneur. And he was in the business of like, you know, the, 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 uh, industrial blades and like customized blades for highly customized and so forth. And now all of a sudden I see that he's he, he's a multi-millionaire by selling masks. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, uh, Haseeb, it's no more about just the first mover advantage. It is also about the fast mover advantage in business. Um, as yeah. you were talking about, you know, Gen Z and the millennials, uh, the thing with millennials and Gen Z is that they are seeking skills which can translate into a personal revenue stream immediately. Um, they're not seeking jobs. They're not seeking nine to five stuff. They love their lifestyle. They, they don't want to compromise on their lifestyle. Um, they don't want to compromise on their fun and their entertainment. And at the same time, they don't like limits. Um, it's a nice generation which is also rebellious and I like, I like the rebel in them because those who are rebellious are revolutionaries. They, they challenge the, the status quo, they challenge the glass ceiling and the red tapes and they'll go beyond it. So this is why we are essentially going through a complete transformation. Um, one more thing which I would love to add, you know, is uh, Hasibans, yesterday, last night I was contemplating Facebook, and we are live on Facebook. It started off with a simple platform to connect people, uh, friendly connections, and just to went out as part of your post that, you know, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling that. All it had was a like button and a comment section. This is where it started. It ended up into a race of self-validation uh, for which people are now seeking to have do anything and everything on social media just to get the following, um, just to become an influencer. It has tapped into the psychographics. It has pressed a chord or a note of, of human uh, psychology, which is resonating like a tsunami. You know, it's a big wave. And now people are just looking to make millions of connections on Facebook. They are venting out whatever they can. And there is so much content going out. 
uh, and now there are videos being posted, there are news being shared. Simple platform turned out into for journalists, for businesses, for marketing. It has become a complete landscape and a parallel world on its own. So sometime when we start a business, it is imperative for us to tap into that psychology of the customer or the target market segment. And you never know because I can guarantee Mark Zuckerberg definitely had no idea where Facebook is going to be 10 years down the line. He just got lucky with it because by luck or by something, he just tapped into the right thing and it resonated so big that it is what it is today. And so goes with Google, with YouTube. I mean, it's education is there. Uh, entertainment is there. Uh, you know, uh, governments are being toppled. Wars are happening just because of Twitter. Um, you know, fashion designers, everybody has become a complete retail. So whatever it has evolved into is great. And I think during this pandemic, a lot of such things are essentially going to evolve. So if we become creative with our approach, with nice original ideas, I think this whole thing is going to evolve into something completely different and completely new. True. Um, and uh, continuing with what you were saying, uh, JJ is saying, what kind of issues do you foresee when employees return to work after getting used to working from home? But uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. So two questions. How, do you, how long do you think um, the situation work from home is going to last? A lot of organizations have already started inviting on part-time basis uh, their employees may, may i sort of like like you know yeah so jj's jj's question is very very valid what kind of issues do you foresee when employees return after work getting used to uh, i mean in other words could, what issues or what challenges are people going to be facing once they return back to that physical office spaces well one thing is for sure that the uh, online online habits of working will continue for some time for sure so rather than like you know out of 10 let's say if there were like you know 10 physical meetings taking place in a boardroom or a conference room perhaps only five will take place because the rest will be done online so the so, so there will be a reduction in the physical contact of people for sure yeah uh, but uh, i think it's a dream come true because we were talking about the new generation well they want they wanted flexi hours. They've got it. They wanted more sc through the screen contact. That that's also going to be. But the main thing is the nine to five. Hasib, it's not just about meetings. It's about sitting in an office, whether in your cubicle or office or open office, and interacting with people because it's a well-oiled machine. So now people are are uh, actually like silos trying to connect. But when they get back together. Will it be difficult for them to start interacting and starting the whole workflow again? I think I think initially their mindset will evolve into. I'm just like you know taking this on a lighter note. Okay, yar, I was in a lockdown in lockdown in I was in a lockdown in my home, and now I'm in a lockdown in my office. So what's the difference? Only geography has changed, <laughs> but the you lockdown know, I, remains I, the I same. Love, I love this analogy. You know, I think. I think Hasib and Zofi, uh, what I think is, is, is going to be exactly the same when a fresh graduate leaves his university and that lifestyle and goes into a state of shock into an office. So there is no difference, you know, even fresh graduates adopt to the change. Uh, once they, so same is the thing that you're sitting at home uh, or maybe you've been jobless for six months, essentially again sitting at home for six months and then you find a job, you go to the office. So, you know, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Um, what really matters is that how the business leadership is going to navigate through it. And will they ask you to continue working from home or will they ask you to come to the office for the sake of nothing? I mean, if I took it, if, I, if we look at manufacturing concerns or factories or product development, we need people on the ground, you know, in agriculture, we need people on the ground. You just cannot work from home uh, unless you move into robotics. But in services industry, I do believe that a lot of banks, because you are from the financial and banking background. A lot of banks and financial services are going to go completely work from home. Um, so no more big banks with a back office in, in a physical facility. A lot of back office and customer services will essentially be working from home. Maybe the teller would be someone who will be sitting there and somebody taking fingerprints and it's going to come into small meat shop uh, banks. It's going to be a bank shop. It's not going to be a bank retail. 
And as we see how the retail has also evolved, you know, completely online. So things are definitely going to evolve uh, in a very different way. Uh, post, I think JJ has asked another question too. What should a CEO do to demonstrate a sense of urgency for business continuity? Um, you know, stay sane. <laughs> stay logical. Don't let the emotions get you. Uh, always, I always say never react, but respond. So it is good to sit back, rethink, strategize, take opinions, and hire good consultants, you know, maybe maybe connect with Hasib and Zofi and take their advice, you know, they're great guys. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, I mean, people like yourself, uh, I myself, you know, we, we connect on a call and I, I take your advice, you know, because it is always good to take opinions of your friends, of those who are experts, likewise, and, and take a decision. It always helps. It has always helped me, you know, and the way you started, Zofi, was that learning is a two-way street. So I think every conversation has learning in there and we should always converse. And this is how a CEO should demonstrate a sense of urgency. Yeah. The urgency yeah. is to immediately connect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think just, 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 just to dwell a little bit deeper into JJ's uh, concern here. Uh, I mean, JJ is a, is, a, is a guru for you and I, and like, you know, in the training industry and one of the pioneers and, foundations and like you no know, so jj salute to you and god bless your health and everything and your smiles and your unconditional helping people and especially with your web mall that you sort of like started jj i, th I think we need to have a cape talk with jj also right shafat <laughs> yes, One yes of right. Days? Absolutely. No, but it will not be on business i would rather have a cape talk with jj on philosophy oh, uh, of life deep. etc so jj is deep Seriously. that kind of problem awesome. but, but yeah so so yes i th I, th I think what JJ's question uh, is, is referring to is, is to redefine the strategy, is to redefine the vision and not just to follow the tracks of the past and copy paste them. Those days are over. So now we need to reinvent the wheel in such a way. And, and the whole management is looking for direction from the top man. So the top man, if he himself is feeling insecure or if he himself does not know what to do, or is confused about his own strategy because there are emotions involved and like you said he needs to think rationally and logically as to what is not only to look after the bottom line for the sake of the shareholders to strengthen his position as a ceo but also to inculcate those values and 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 and, and use this opportunity to to redefine some of the cultural practices within the organization which people don't talk about and keep lying dormant and uh, under and then so it is those baggages that actually have surfaced more for organizations right now, those unresolved issues in relationships, unresolved issues uh, within their processes, uh, which were sort of like affecting as uh, as critical. So I think the whole the whole system needs to be re looked at by the CEO and their top executive teams as to how they can bring about infrastructural uh, improvements to consolidate the foundation of an organization which can then grow exponentially. I mean, this is my humble. I completely agree with you, Hasib. Um, I would love to add on a couple of things. Yeah. Larger corporations are always dependent on SMEs. So let's look at right. Unilever or PNG. They have the distribution channels, distributors, which is SME. Again, they have retailer, Karyana store, journal store, superstore, again, SME and then it reaches out to the consumer. Now, if the top management at a corporation comes up with a software update and redefines how business is going to be done through apps or with a device, the problem is the learning curve of the SMEs below it. So one wrong decision from a large corporation can affect how what's happening all the way down to the consumer. And one wrong decision by the SMEs and the, and the unwillingness to adopt can affect the operations of the corporation. So it's a two-way right. street. And the problem, especially in Pakistan, is that SME sector, right. he is right. still ready to open up his Facebook page to start selling online. He is so, blaming the government for the lockdown. But the problem is you're just not ready to adopt. They are ready to incur the expenditure of overheads of opening their retail, but they're not ready to invest a little bit into digital and find a new solution 
to sell or to still reach out to the market. And this is the problem here that unless they do not adopt to the change today, these businesses are going to lose out if the whole uh, economic and financial and business structure is going to fall off. And this is the biggest challenge which I foresee in the future. So I think education of business owners, the Desi said mindset needs to change in this country big time. And if we don't do that, sorry to say it, no offense to anyone, but it's just out of my humble pain that I feel in my heart. Because our local brands are not so successful way against international brands to even grab local market share, forget the exports. You know? So if we do not have that mindset today to adopt, I think everybody will lose out in this game. Or unemployment will be more than that. Crime rate will increase, the disease will increase, the pandemic will increase. There are many effects. So it's very important for us to just go in the right direction right now and make the right decisions. Well said. Very well said. Madam, any other question? No, he answered uh, my next question, which was, but I'll, I'll say it anyway, that uh, during such times, the two budgets cuts that are there are training and no. marketing. So my question was going to be that still, how can people market themselves uh, during this? And you've answered that very well, the thinking of creative ways, how they can market themselves, changing their mindsets, etc. So um, you've already answered that, but if you'd still like to add something. Yeah, I think I always believe marketing is the only function which includes product, place, price, promotion, people, processes, packaging. It is the only function which has a direct impact on sales. And in a PL statement, sales is the top number. Everything below it is, you know, just expense, expense, expense. The problem right. of financial consultant is that they keep focusing on all the numbers below sales, trying to tweak that. They do not focus on how to grow the big number, which looks after especially, everybody. Especially coming from uh, from a background of finance, coming into the CEO seat, my yeah. favorite job are to sort of like control the cost and make the organization more efficient. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, so those are right concerns and there's nothing wrong in it because like, you know, but I Absolutely. think like, you know, once I'll go back to my own personal life, like you know, about 25 years ago or so, when I used to work in Pakistan tobacco, and then uh, so Zofi's father, God bless him, very spiritual and a very wise man. So he came and stayed with us in Karachi. Usuga head office Pakistan tobacco ka was in Karachi. I'm talking about 35, sorry, 35 years ago. And then I was saying, Abajan, income badi kam hai hamari yahan pe to like you know, I need to look into. Uh, like expenses control rather than focusing and quote unquote rather than focusing your energies into how to save the money why don't you focus your energies how to how to increase your income true now this was a seed in my mind i cultivated and nurtured that seed for a very long time and god bless those of his father along with my own father's instigation that 24 years ago that we have eventually started doing something on our own but yes uh, then sky's the limit so rather than focus, focusing on the bottom line i think we need to focus on the top line as well too yeah, yeah for sure separately Absolutely. as a, and i think organizations in a highly competitive environment are forced to do that anyways the only thing is that the personal whims and personal emotions of people are taking those those decisions come in between because sometimes they need to take some risky decisions now, risky decisions, when we go in the hierarchy, like, you know, towards the top, if my insecurity level is high, because my income level is high, and sort of like, you know, uh, so will I be really taking those risky decisions or will I take safe decisions? Now, if I take safe decisions, yes, I we do secure ourselves, but we also lose out on the opportunities that are out there by taking more risks involved. So I, I think this will be a, a major challenge for the uh, people coming out out of a very insecure state of mind due to the pandemic, Corona has actually shaken everybody up, not only at an organizational level, but mainly from within the, the, the individual. So the individual dilemma which people are facing is going to impact the decision making of the organizations in the long term. Absolutely. So I, spot on. 100%. Yeah. Hasiba, you're definitely spot on. I think it's just the mindset and 
देखिए अब मैं एक बड़ा स्ट्रॉन्ग बिलीवर हूँ एक बात में दुनिया में हर बिजनेस इसलिए एग्जिस्ट करता है जो हमें नजर आता है ऑल द वे फ्रॉम रेडी वाला टू अ सब्जी वाला बिकॉज ही इज मेकिंग प्रॉफिट द मोमेंट उस बिजनेस में से प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी खत्म हो जाएगी दैट बिजनेस विल वैनिश फ्रॉम द फेस ऑफ आर्थ मेनी बिजनेस सो एसेंशियली इट जस्ट ऑन आस दैट हाउ क्रिएटिवली एंड विद वट काइंड ऑफ इनोवेशन विद वट काइंड ऑफ एफिशियंट बिजनेस स्ट्रक्चर्स वी डू दैट बिजनेस अ बिजनेस दैट वी लव टू डू and it it has profitability because it exists out there so if you just do it the smart way um you will continue to exist but the problem with the pandemic is that actually many businesses are going to change because the consumer preferences have changed it's no more about luxury products it's no more about luxury cars it is about survival these days it is about it's a saving oriented economy this is why the interest rates have gone down because there's a cash influx which has been unused the rate of transactions have gone slow which has resulted in the decline of prices so in such an economy the best way is that cash is available all you need to do is come up with a smart idea invest into it as a poker player it is good to go in you know uh, with an all in approach but even if you go all in it is okay to go all in on the table but make sure you still have some poker chips back there in the account you know uh so as far as you can still survive and make a smart move plan a portfolio and i think we can all go through this the most important thing is take care of our health this is the most important thing this year if we go past it healthy and with the minimum expenditures let's i suggest my own household as well ki yaar koi bila wajah kapde shapde khareedne ki zarurat nahi hai koi jewelry lene ki zarurat nahi hai just hang tight you know is just one and a half year we can pass through this without overspending next year yeah. everything is be open ye baat na kar yaar main kal main niche gaya tha apne shopping karne ke liye thodi si apne kashmiri bazaar pe jaake to maine hmm. jaake wo extra extra tupperware main le aaya do teen dabbe mein extra le aaya maine kaha yaar yahan pe wo cheeze store karne ke liye nahi ye extra expense hai ye kyun le aaye ho main kaha come on yaar you you sort of like I'm pulling my leg main do tupperware ke dabbe le aaya hu yaar <laughs> no you guys everybody's not, making some choices yeah 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 it's it's you know start changing the mindset about you know impulsive buying etc because i change hats every day i i, I was having this like uh, sometimes i assume the role of cmo sometimes i'm the cfo sometimes <laughs> i'm a pro so uh, so now it's 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 time for every uh, employee or an entrepreneur yeah. to actually build their capacity build their skill sets towards so many multifaceted yeah, uh, yeah. and also C- cto <laughs> yeah. cto yeah. cto stands for chief thrashing officer <laughs> uh, just before just before we say goodbyes i just uh, want to ask you how the lockdown is going uh, for you how many kids do you have uh, shafat uh, sophia i have two kids 8 and 6 a boy and a girl respectively and okay. uh, they are just doing fine i think they tend to recognize their father more um i uh-huh. used to be away from them because of work so right. yes, we have built a very good bond uh, you know me and me, my daughter we play piano almost every day we play guitars she's learning how to do drums my my son he has developed a, a knack for painting um yeah. and i have started to cook along with my wife we are trying out new recipes um yeah. i think that it's lockdown is is all right uh but as much as as comfortable as we do feel alhamdulillah because god blessed us with let's say another few months of income where we can survive or let's say a couple of years but i my heart definitely goes out to those who are who are living on a daily wages or who are living yeah. on a monthly and yeah. uh during this time all i i'm doing sitting at home is trying to think and even act how i can support my friends my other family members my colleagues my ex employees um and how i can support them you know it doesn't cost a penny that if you share someone's facebook page or press a like on it or subscribe to someone youtube channel is for free and i think this is the minimum that we can do for each other uh from our skill set a good word is great and i think the best charity in the world is to create employment 
and uh, during this time if I'm doing anything I'm just trying to come up with new business ideas um, at the peace of my home uh, where I can increase employment and at the same time also develop the skill sets of our nation to become more competitive once not only I'm out of form but once the entire Pakistan or entire world is out of form. Good. Right. Uh, it's pay because uh, I see a lot of complaints from families who are in lockdown, etc. So, share yada jata hai. With your permission, I will uh, say a share. Itne manu sahi yad se ho gaye. Ab rehai milegi to bikhar jayenge. So, I don't know if you understood that or not. <laughs> no, no. But, if you get so used to a particular prison, whether it's the prison of the mind or it's the prison of four walls, which can also be your home. Ab to other si much ko hai se jine mein. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have also had a habit of going out and going out. Then lockdown came. Now we have this habit. You know, human is very adaptable. Um, right. It's, you know, it's that I think it's all about because you're you're in this space and I'm really not in a position to say anything on the subject as such. But just as a naive little, you know, uh, thinker, I think it's really the mindset. If you have um, a thankful mindset, a mindset of gratitude, you can never go wrong in life. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's about our wish list and bucket list. I mean, I have just thrown the bucket list behind my back. My bucket list is essentially, if I'm healthy, I get two meals a day or three meals, whatever it is, and I have shelter and I can pay my bills. I'm good. Well, I'm good. You know, one year, two year, we can pass this time. Opportunities, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And this is what you guys discussed with Max Babri as well. There is light. I think insan complain karne ke liye bas har wakat hai. We, we, the blame game, um, I think if we don't learn this in this pandemic, that we should blame game and learn to be happy in whatever state we are, I think this is the biggest achievement that this pandemic will give us as humanity. Absolutely. No, no, absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, the real challenge is that we have to do our own, like, you know, that we have to I think the uh, opportunity is that I have actually connected with my global friends since I have been in contact with my global So I have actually reached out to them and sort of like recultivated and re established my, 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 my network and my friends. Okay, like Zaira, when you go through your examination and, and your, your analysis and, and you go down the memory lanes and you start appreciating, I took a time to get this self reflection. So in the past three months, I have remembered when I so that's an omen. Kedi ke fada fada thak se ya to usko WhatsApp message ya Facebook message ya Messenger pe ya Insta ke upar ya bottom ke upar ya koi na koi ya kisi ko call kar li video call kar li ko catch up kisi ke baal bhi ud gaye hain kisi ki double chins nikal aayi hain like you mm-hmm. know hum log so 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 we sort of like lose out on people in life that we love. So I think one of the best things that has happened to me at least like you know out to us is to is to reconnect with our friends globally. Yeah. Absolutely. No, we, you know, look at us. I mean, we just reconnected during the pandemic, uh, yeah, that's true. you know, and it, it, it just works so great. So I think, yes, uh, there is goodness in everything and we need to look at the positive side of the things. Uh, so I think, I, I think pandemic ka hai na, wo slogan hona chahiye, connecting people. hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, this is a borderless world now and with the borderless yeah. world comes opportunities. Which wasn't considered normal before. I mean, मुझे याद है हमारे क्लाइंट थे ज़ुरिक में मैंने उसको बड़ा रिक्वेस्ट की मैंने कहा सर ऑनलाइन बात कर लेते हैं स्काइप के ऊपर दो तीन साल पुरानी बात है and he turned around saying कि नहीं यार शिपाज you gotta fly down and let's discuss it it has to be a face to face discussion I mean what the hell I have to take a flight I have to take to the hotel जब वहाँ पे गए दो घंटे की मीटिंग हुई जो बात हम ऑनलाइन कर सकते थे ultimately sign करके वाप your industry is important. Except, I tell people and I tell companies too. That when you are sick, you go to a doctor. You pay the fee. Doctors can fix you. When companies are sick or SMEs are sick, they say that we don't want to go to a doctor, we have to take self-medication. Which means we will not go to a commercial advisor, we will not go to a consultant, we will not go to a doctor. Yeah. Which means we will not go to a commercial advisor, we will not go to a consultant, we will not go to a coach. 
cut that. Actually, this is shooting yourself in the foot. The first thing you need to do when you're sick is go to a coach, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I mean, I mean, very, get consulted. Very, very good point. But is, is, the, is the flip side of the coin from a, uh, from, from a client's point of view, be aati hai. And I think that that's a message that needs to be sent across to uh, people like who are in the consultancy and training industry. Is that so much has been misused that the clients have lost faith. Clients have lost faith. So, unko bhi wo bichare kya kare? Unko dust mein se ek consultant sahi khara kisam ka milta hai. Or eventually, fir wo conflict conflict of interest aa jata hai. Very few consultants will be out there who would advise the client as to what is needs to be advised. Rather than protecting their own interests and their contract renewal, so Same this is also your app. You're spot on. Same is the case in our advertising space as well, and even investment space. अब वो आता business card लेके investment consultant का पीछे साढे सात percent commission sign किया होता है, तो वो आपको क्या advice करेगा? He is working for a साढे सात percent commission. Same goes with agencies. इनको media से commission मिलते हैं, and they just shove it down के नहीं sir, आज भी आप बाहर hoarding लगा लें. I mean, hoarding doesn't work, you know. <laughs> it's just common sense. So, and yes, there are people who are definitely unprofessional, and they still call themselves as digital marketers, advertising gurus. And yes, they do mess up with the market. But I think we need to continue doing what we do. Um, you know, uh, compete through the competition, and you know, take our market share. Very good, very good. I'm using this opportunity just to say that because we were talking about connecting with people as well. that everybody who comes across this video or can pass on the message that do connect with people you never know that they might be totally isolated they might be going through a great kind of uh, isolation depression or anything so it's good just a one liner can change a person's mood even any um, get them out of a certain negative spiral so i think it's wonderful let me add on to what what you saying in urdu like you know wo kehte hain wo doobte ko tinke ka sahara true so sometimes i have been to very very down phases of my life and more so than like you know an, an average normal person because i've uh, gone through more emotional turbulences because i've sort of like you know, i'm a risk taker and i'm a doer and I, and i believe in making mistakes and like you know well sometimes repeating those mistakes also for which i glad to, to get a fresh one but yeah primarily uh, i think what we need to do is ke like you know at times to koi choti si baat koi choti si encouragement kisi ke bare mein koi baat kar le sirf koi hello kar le yaar main 10 da, saal ho gaye tere se baat nahi hui hai waisi mujhe tera khayal aaya ya like you know i just thought i'll connect with you and then sort of like yeah i remember those times when you inspired me or you gave me something which really helped me so small little thing like this will uh, will go a million miles in the other person's mind that there is somebody out there who values me absolutely right i think this is the beauty of zofi you know she has that nurturing motherly heart which goes out to almost everyone you know you're amazing the uh, the soft side the spiritual side of you you know it it has always been an inspiration for me to be honest and uh, i think yes we need to put our egos aside it's a little microscopic city virus which we cannot even see we don't know how and where we can get it and uh, we can't do anything about it i think this is where egos goes down you know what what ego are we talking about so uh, with with this kind of fragility i think it's extremely important that yes we connect from a heart to heart perspective leave our positions business positions aside uh, i definitely believe that there is nothing permanent in this world our wealth our positions our skills our health nothing is permanent we evolve we transform regularly continuously it's just on us that whether we transform into goodness or we transform into the wrong the negativity it is all up to us absolutely absolutely anything you need to yes, add sir. thank you so much afat this was very refreshing and um i appreciate you. you taking out the time and great advice and we should uh, we should connect more often and i'll also follow some of your advice lekin ye uh to aapne 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 baatein badi achi ki hain and mashallah you such a good communicator and uh, like you know so uh, i am sure that your clients benefit out of this a lot also 
हमारी भी थोड़ी सी हेल्प करते सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग के अंदर वी नीड दिस हेल्प आल्सो सो यू ऑलवेज पुट मी ऑन द स्पॉट हसीब यू नो यू यू जस्ट आस्क दिस ऑनलाइन यू नो सो हैप्पी टू डू इट जी वी हम वी आर हाजिर वी आर वेल इक्विप्ड एंड ऑनेस्टली थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स सच एन ऑनर टू ए कनेक्ट विद माय ऑल दुबई एक्सपर्ट फ्रेंड्स who I never happened to meet in dubai but in pakistan it's never too late uh, love you pakistan. guys stay well stay good lots of prayers lots of best wishes for you and hope to visit your cave very soon absolutely inshallah inshallah. inshallah no thank you very much uh, thank you, you, you guys thank you thank you so much bye okay bye